Hi everyone, my name is Derek Robinson and I'm a senior online course developer here at InterSystems. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can get started with InterSystems Iris Cloud SQL. We'll do this by interviewing Raj Singh, one of our product managers. Raj will walk us through the screens and show us how to easily get started using InterSystems Iris Cloud SQL. All right, hi everybody and welcome. We're going to be talking about a brand new cloud service here today and I'm joined by Raj Singh, the product manager for cloud and developer experience. Raj, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, so today we're going to talk about InterSystems Iris Cloud SQL, uh, as well as a little bit uh, Cloud Integrated ML, which is a piece of Cloud SQL. So to get started here, tell us a little bit about this new cloud offering and, and what really it entails and, and why users should be excited about it. So uh, this is very exciting because InterSystems Iris, our data platform, has been uh, one of the premier databases for you know, multi-model development, very flexible and very sophisticated and powerful uh, data-centric development for, for decades. And what we've done with our Cloud SQL cloud service is sort of uh, package up the, the relational functionality, the SQL functionality, into a really easy to use um, piece so that you don't have to learn the whole you know, the whole InterSystems Iris platform to get started quickly with one of our flagship pieces of the platform, which is the, the SQL relational engine. And uh, that's why we have chosen to offer that via cloud services first. Right, right. Nice. So it sounds like a nice low barrier way to take advantage of some of the most powerful features in the platform. Um, so let's jump in, if you don't mind, and let's take a look and, and kind of you can show us around and see how the service works for, for a new user. Sure, it's uh, it's really simple. So here I am on the InterSystems Cloud Services uh, landing page, yep. and right now I have uh, one subscription here, InterSystems Iris Cloud SQL. We have other cloud services uh, coming down the pipeline, and you can get InterSystems Iris itself as a managed service. But for today, for today, we're going to focus on the Cloud SQL service. Right. So once you're here, you could create a deployment. Actually, what you do first, we, you first you would create an account. I already have an account, so it's right. uh, more difficult to show you that. But you know, obviously, very simple, like any account creation. Nice. Now, creating this deployment here, right now, there's only one service in my list, Cloud SQL, and I could add integrated ML to it if I wanted to, yep. and choose the deployment size. Now, when you go through this, you'll definitely want to enable external connections. Otherwise, your um, <clears throat> you won't be able to access this this uh, service from your desktop or from any other computer. It will only be limited to whatever subnet, uh, either AWS or Azure, whichever cloud you pick, whichever right. su whichever subnet is there. Sometimes that might be useful if you want to do some some inner service communication just within that subnet and really lock it down for security purposes, but normally you'll want to enable external connections. Right, right, makes sense. So you'd go in, um, not going to check any allowed IP address ranges, I just want to allow any IP address to connect to it. Okay, and I'll continue here. I'm just going to select uh, AWS is the uh, cloud provider we have available now that is soon to expand and give your deployment a name. I am not going to create this one because I already have one pre-created, but you see how quickly in just nice. about 30 seconds I can generate a deployment. And then nice, nice. what I have going now is a full you know, relational database, just as you might sign up for... Uh, you know, Postgres on AWS or SQL Server on Azure, you can, you know, quickly get a full SQL compliant database running in the cloud. So what we hope you'll find is that you'll get a higher performance and a low, lower total cost of ownership mm -hmm. from InterSystems Cloud SQL Service than you might with some other offerings. Right. As well as our excellent support. So now we have our database here, our deployment here. And I will uh, just go into it. And you'll have very few options, which is a good thing, because it's uh, you know very lean and mean and easy to get started with. Right. There's some information 
that you'll need here to connect from a desktop. Now, one thing to realize about our service is that you uh, can only connect, you can only make encrypted connections. We've locked it down so that uh, for security purposes that you'll have to go through uh, TLS. And I'm going to quickly show you how to how to set that up with one of the most popular desktop uh, SQL clients, dBeaver. Nice. Okay. But you'll see here we we've got a host name, port, name, user namespace, which is an inner system specific concept, but you can think of it as sort of a database, and uh, username and password, and that's all you're going to need to connect. So first of all, before I do that, let me show you the easiest way to interact with this service, which is just through traditional SQL. You'll see here in my breadcrumb menu at the top, I have, uh, I'm, con I'm connected to this deployment, which I just showed. And here's my SQL editor, a very basic thing. I can browse my schema tree over here. So I have just two little uh, sample tables set up. I'm going to select star from care site. So you can just do some sanity checks on your data, make sure you can make sure you can uh, see tables and all, but that doesn't take you very far, right? You don't want right. this very bare bones SQL editor going on here. So I will start up D Beaver. So I have my connection here. Let me show you what it looks like. Actually, before I do the connection, let me show you how to establish this TLS connection. Right. So to set up TLS, I'm going to need to use this X509 certificate. Nice. And luckily, there's an article that our product manager for uh, SQL has written here on our community site that tells me how to set this up. So I see here I need to download the X509 certificate. You can go through this in detail and import the certificate into the key store using this, uh, using this command. Right. So I am going to go over here, download the X509 certificate here. Now I, re I already did this yesterday, so it's trying to give it a new name with a number one. And I will cancel that because I'm just going to use the one I had yesterday and follow these instructions to import it. So let me bring up my little terminal window here. So I know my file is here in uh, downloads and it's called certificate SQL AAS .p -e -m. Yep. And I need to put it somewhere good. I think I'll just put it for for uh, example here. I will just leave it in my home directory users rsync. So I'm going to type key tool minus import cert minus file. Path to this is like that. Minus key store. And I said I put it in my home directory, so I'm just going to go like that. JKS. And this is uh, this is a little tricky. This is a password, a new password that you're creating for the key store, not one that already right. exists. So don't go try to find it somewhere. <laughs> right. Okay. Good to know. Type that twice and trust this certificate. Yes, that's the whole point. And we just added it to the key store. So now I need to go and create a configuration file for dBeaver so that it knows where to find a certificate for this particular service. Right, that makes sense. So since I'm on a Macintosh, I know that I need to go in applications dbeaver.app contents, Mac OS. And this is the place where uh, dBeaver will look for configuration files. So following that article again, you will, you'll read that you need an SSL config.properties file. And 
the key things you need to put in that file are two lines, trust store equals path to the keystore.jks file and the password. Right. So I will go in here, I have a trust store, I will point it at my home directory and put in the password. And that's it. So dbeaver should be able to find that file. Right. Cool. So now moving, I'm going to move over to dbeaver. And I've, I've set up the connection here. Let's take a look at what I have here. So I have a inner system iris uh, JDBC driver already installed. Mm -hmm. dbeaver is coming with it now. We've done the work to uh, make sure they have a driver for for our relational database. Right. And all we need to do then is connect to the to the right uh, instance of it. We're going to connect by host. We need the host name and the port. Remember, we can get that over here from the over, overview page for that deployment. Scroll yep. down, you'll find the host name and the port. And we also need the database slash schema. And that's over here under namespace. Right, right. So we put that in here and username and password. So after you have your username and password in there, there's one more important setting to add and it's over on the driver properties tab here of the connection. So scroll down in the driver properties list, find the connection security level and in the value area, just type in 10 there. Right, okay. Once that's all set, then you should be good to go. And that username and password is what you created when creating your deployment of Cloud SQL, correct? Correct. Yep. And that username is right here too. We're using yep. that. That doesn't change. That's set, but you can change the password. Right. Cool. And now if I expand this, it will go out and connect and we'll see all the, all the uh, schemas that are available to us. Great. Great. So here is that SQL user schema I showed before. Mm -hmm. And those two tables we saw, care site and persons. And so now, if you're a dBeaver user, you can do all the things you're used to doing. You know, the exact same workflows you use for any other database, um, but now you're using Iris Cloud SQL. Right, right. So all the everything you know about um, manipulating other SQL databases from within dBeaver yep. apply here. Right, right. Nice. So th those few steps get you to the point where you're you're using that you know, reliable and highly performant Iris database with the, the processes and tools that you've been used to using uh, with your with your SQL applications, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so that was, thank you for that. That was a really nice uh, quick overview of how to get started. So uh, just before we wrap up here, um, what are any other notable features or other things that go beyond the basics that you might want to call out for people to learn more as they kind of dive in and get started with uh, InterSystems Iris Cloud SQL? Yeah, so um, we didn't have time to talk about it this time, but maybe next time we'll dig into integrated ML. Yep, if yep. I had checked that box, if you remember, I talked about it briefly. If I had checked that integrated ML box, you would have had access to our SQL, our SQL based integrated ML uh, functionality, which yep. uh, we've extended SQL to allow you to do machine learning, training, scoring, all that, all that you're used to or right within a relational database, right. and which is really exciting stuff. Also, if you think about it, once you have uh, a cloud service, you know, endpoint for, for your data, for your relational data through standard JDBC or ODBC drivers, you can imagine easily integrating this within any of your existing data orchestration workflows. Now, I know a lot of you are probably beginning to you know, do a lot more imperative scripting of your of your data work and using tools like DBT or Airflow to <clears throat> create re repeatable, you know, data transformation workflows. This is a great way to, you know, dip your toes in the water. Maybe you maybe you want to try out a new database. Mm 
Um, you know, you could easily do a trial with Inner Systems Cloud SQL uh, because it's just, you know, adding another JDBC or ODBC connection to the mix and, and just updating a script. So, and we, we hope you really find uh, that you love the performance and the ease yeah. of use uh, that we have there. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of these workflow orchestration tools are hosted on the cloud anyway. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, this is uh, absolutely, you know, no change in what you'd normally do to hooking up to any other database. Right, right. Exactly. Fits right into the picture. So mm -hmm. uh, that's great info and uh, linked alongside this video. We'll have uh, information to follow up and try it out yourself. Uh, and as you mentioned, Raj, I, I believe you said it was a trial uh, credit that you get for for beginning and trying a, um, a deployment of Cloud SQL. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Throw some tough data sizes at us or some complicated yeah. data sets. Uh, I think you'll be pleased at what you what you find. Well, awesome. Uh, Raj, thanks so much for the walkthrough, and we'll have to circle back with you to, to look at some of the other features uh, as, as people start adopting the service. So thanks again. Okay, great. Looking forward to it.